Tech family, I need to clarify some things. I've seen several early stage reviews and commentary on the Surface Book 3, and I feel some important things about this device aren't being covered, so I wanted to hop on and tell you about them today. For those of you who know me, you'd know that I was a huge Surface Book 2 15 user, and it featured prominently in many of my videos and recommendations. For those of you who just joined us recently, firstly, welcome, and now you know. I used that laptop as one of my primary devices for around two years and loved it. I will probably get a Surface Book 3 15 in for one of my detailed reviews, but since it shares so much in common with the Book 2, I thought it worth accelerating my talking points and telling you about them today. I'm going to first explain several reasons why I think this device is unique in a good way. Then I'm going to talk about the issues I had with the Surface Book 2, leading to why you don't see it here with me right now. And apologies up front, there's not a lot of B-roll in this video because I no longer have the laptop. All right. Number one hidden gem about the Surface Book series is that they are completely cold to the touch when using them. For all those people like me who don't want a laptop that gets very hot on your lap or don't like to feel warmth on the keyboard deck, this laptop is your savior. This is because the Surface Book series has most of the heat generating components placed behind the screen so that when you detach it, it's a fully functioning computer. The exception being the dedicated graphics which is placed in the keyboard base. A wonderful side effect of this design is that the parts of the laptop that you would actually come into contact with remain comfortably cold to the touch. The one exception to this is if you are performing tasks like gaming that require the dedicated graphics card. Whether the engineers over at Microsoft were aiming for this or it was just a lucky side effect, not having to feel warmth or heat just makes this laptop an absolute joy to use. There's none other that I know like it. Second thing I like about the Book 15 is that it is the only laptop that I know of that is pretty good at everything. Seriously, let's take a look at how it performs for common use cases. Casual users, browsing the web or using Office-like applications. Tick. It's got the best keyboard I've ever used. Great trackpad, phenomenal screen with a 3 by 2 aspect ratio, it's super lightweight with solid battery life, and it has one of the best webcams of any laptop. Alright, gamer. Tick, it's got a great graphics card that can play the latest AAA games at decent settings. Programmer, tick, it's got enough processing power, options for plenty of RAM, it has that amazing keyboard that I certainly love to type on, the display size, resolution and aspect ratio are great for looking at code, plus it's pretty lightweight. Video editors, tick, it's got a capable processor and a powerful dedicated graphics card for video editing software to take advantage of. Compare it to other premium laptops out there. Razor Blades keyboards are uncomfortable to type on and the laptops itself are heavier. Aeros have coil wine, horrific webcams and their fans are louder when performing light tasks. MacBook Pro 16's graphics, while good, aren't really good enough to play AAA titles. Basically, every other laptop I know of, you really have to sacrifice a use case. There is nothing as well-rounded as this laptop. It certainly doesn't mean it's the best at any particular use case, but it is pretty good at everything. All right, let's turn to the negative. The Book 2 had quite a few niggling issues that I hope are fixed in the Book 3, and I haven't seen others talk about. The infamous 400 megahertz throttle. What happens here is due to inadequate cooling, the laptop would throttle the CPU down to 400 megahertz, making the whole machine insanely slow. And often you'd need to restart the laptop to get it to run at regular speeds. Some units had it happen a lot, others not so much. Although there are some workarounds listed, after trying them, it still occasionally occurred for me. And boy, when it happens, it makes the whole thing unusable. Just look at how many complaints there are out there about this. Next, the dedicated graphics card would sometimes disappear. I kid you not, you'd have to separate the laptop, taking the top part off and put it back on for it to refine the graphics. Next, the fulcrum design leaves a lot of open space for debris to get inside this laptop. My own Book 2 screen eventually cracked as a tiny piece of debris fell into the unit and cracked the screen when it was closed. Luckily, I had Microsoft complete coverage and they replaced the unit for a $50 fee. But three months later, my replacement unit bricked itself, meaning it would not boot at all. When I turned it on, you'd see the Windows BIOS boot logo, but it would never boot and the BIOS could not be accessed. So I had to send it back as well, which is why I no longer have this device. Luckily, the Microsoft store folks were super helpful in offering me another replacement laptop for it. End of the day, the Book 2 was not the most reliable machine. The Book 3 seems to share a lot in common with the Book 2. I would only consider buying the new one if you also buy it with Microsoft's complete protection. Note, 
Unlike Apple Care Plus, which goes for three years, Microsoft's protection plan is only two. So consider buying it from somewhere like Best Buy where you can purchase a longer three-year extended warranty and accident protection. To be honest, if you are someone who plans to keep your laptop for five plus years, I definitely think twice about investing in this one. Anyway, folks, I hope this video helped. If it did, you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up and the notification bell. I would certainly appreciate it. Until next time, I'll catch you later.